Hello everyone and welcome to what is hopefully the final part here of our uh, sort of block out mid poly typewriter section. Um, we have one last thing to do and if I pull over um, Puref is going to be this sort of back module. Now I've gone ahead and gathered quite a bit of additional reference. Um, this is a weird piece. It's a lot of stuff sort of tangled in uh, itself but it's basically if we break it down to its most fundamental parts, it is basically just this frame. Um, we have a bunch of different angles showing that off. Just kind of this frame with then some stuff attached and woven through it. Um, and as long as we can anchor it down somewhere, we can probably get it looking pretty believable. Um, we don't know exactly where all these pieces are going. I, I tried to find reference that's sort of like a camera pointing up. Um, couldn't really do that. We got a lot of side shots, which is nice, something we haven't had a lot of uh, previously, so we should be able to get this together. And ideally, we're going to get this all done here. Now, this is <laughs> probably a bit more of a complicated piece, but I think I'm quite okay having this be a bit of a longer um, recording, knowing that I could hopefully get this done, uh, this part. So let's start. Uh, we sort of already have this nub here, and I'll maybe find a good reference to keep on screen as I'm just sort of getting through this. Um, control shift A to keep that on top. Okay, so we kind of have this nub here. Uh, it's close, but not exactly. As you can see, there's a bit of a panel line here. So I'm actually going to make these two separate pieces, but this frame still goes up a little bit. So we're on the right track. We can still use this to our advantage. Uh, but I'm just going to lower the height of it quite a bit. And then I want these to be tucked in. So I'm just going to be vertex snapping those guys in. So we have this sort of little bump. Still a little bit wide, I'd say. Um, if we're looking at the scale of this, these side parts are certainly quite a bit larger than this. So I'm going to scale scale this in a little bit just trying to get a feel for that spacing seems pretty good maybe a tad bigger um, okay and we can build off of this now so let's go ahead and spawn a cube in And we're going to sort of start stacking things up. With this guy, I'm going to hit D and vertex snap our pivot um, to the corner. We have so much geo going around, it doesn't know where to go. Um, but we can snap that guy here. And we're just going to just have this flush all the way around for now. It doesn't seem to be going too much higher, maybe about... Yay high, um, but it is pulling out. So we can see it's going pretty deep. Uh, and let's get a side shot to see exactly how deep it's going in. It's not too far, but certainly far enough. About there, I'd say. Um, so let's sort of start at the bottom and build our way up here. Um, the foundation, of course, is going to be these, these legs here. Um, we can see by looking at it, they're sort of welded up and then they once again have these panel lines that transition into a different shape altogether. So it's kind of a smooth transition, but then it changes. And, um, if we actually take a closer look at what's going on with the shape, initially I thought it was kind of these two pillars with something crossing in the middle. Um, it seems a bit more like two pillars, and this is like a cylinder that's welded on top because um, we have this smooth transition here. Um, seems to be present in pretty much every single reference, so let's go ahead and uh, build that in. We're going to have to start with these smooth transition squares on the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a cut through with our cut tool right in the middle and bevel that. And I'm trying to get the thickness to be 
about how thick I see this. Maybe a 0.65 seems to be about the thickness. And then add another cut for how, th um, how deep I want these to go back. Let's try and get a side view. They seem to be relatively thick. So can make them probably square shaped. It also seems like this piece that comes up that's resting on top is a little bit thinner. So it's better to go a bit wider with this base. Um, and then from here, what we can do is simply extrude up. Let's try and get a feel for how high this should go. It doesn't seem like it's going too high up, kind of like that. This is a good shot of it. Okay. And we can always bevel this. Um, or I suppose if we're beveling it, we have to do it all the way around. Like so. So we get that smooth transition. I'm gonna clean up these sides here since we're currently taking a look at them. Let's go ahead and isolate this guy in our viewport. snap these guys to the correct spot <laughs> it was uh, causing a face to sort of overlap over an edge where it couldn't really do so so that's better making sure the side yeah the side has that issue as well so just make sure you're being a bit careful when doing that just snap them all to their corresponding edges can merge the vertices on that and then I'm going to go ahead and just do an auto smooth to sort of fix some of those smoothing errors. Um, okay, nice. So now let's go ahead and build these pillars up. They seem to go pretty high. They seem to actually stop here. Um, even though initially I thought they capped around there. So let's bring in a cube. And what I'm actually going to do for this segment, since I think we're probably going to reuse a cube a bunch, I'm just going to keep this off to the side. So we can just duplicate from it and have a source rather than having it spawn in the middle. Um, but I'm going to put the pivot in the bottom and snap this here. And the reason I'm not just extruding this up is I want these panel lines. And if we have them as separate pieces, uh, when we polish it inside a ZBrush, there'll be a crease here and a crease here. Of course, when we do the low poly, um, we'll all bake it down into one mesh, but this is kind of our ZBrush setup mesh. So I'm mimicking the size of this. And let's see how high we want it to go. They're pretty high. Um, I'm just going to start by placing these in and then I'm going to put a cylinder in just to sort of block some of these shapes out a bit more. Cylinder has 20 edges, and uh, we'll probably need a bunch of these as well, so I'll leave this guy here as a source. Let's rotate this, holding J to snap. Um, I'm just snapping these guys to the ends, sort of mimicking this shape here. And yeah, so this is bulging out a little bit. Um, it's a bit thinner, kind of like so. And 
It is about roughly this high, I'd say. Yeah, and it has this sort of shape going through it. I think that's the purpose of it. But it is actually welded on. Um, so we'll have to do that later. But right now we're just sort of blocking blocking all of that out. Um, it then has these things that extrude up and has another cylinder going through that. But I just want to make sure I have this sort of back set up properly. It seems to go up higher. This is probably the best reference we have for it. It goes up a little bit higher. This thing might be just over halfway up. Uh, and then it sort of caps out and rounds there. It also seems much thinner here than it is at the base, so I'm led to believe it's kind of tapering in. So we can do that. Let's actually combine these two shapes so we can work on them at the same time pretty easily. I'm going to pull this in. And then focus on getting the height of it correct. So just bringing these up a little bit. Seems relevant. It seems to be when you go horizontal across. Seems like this bottom bar is level with this. Okay. So let's work on this guy first. Um, we're gonna have to sort of weld it into place here. And it has like an opening where these guys are sticking out of. But first let's just ensure that the size is correct. I'm going to select both of these guys and then grab all these inner verts. I'm just kind of squish them in to thin it all out a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Okay, we can start connecting this. So let's just isolate these guys. And I'm gonna try and do a, just a simple straight up Boolean with this. And hopefully the cleanup isn't too much. So we can select the two of these guys and under Boolean type do union, new Boolean operation and delete history and base objects. It's gonna keep this geo here. A lot of weird stuff going on. Um, but we should be able to just sort of snap it off to the side pretty easily. This is why I don't like doing booleans that are unison too much. Especially when the faces are flush with one another. It's mostly these middle guys that are a problem. But we can always just uh, cut this in half and flip it over rather than doing both sides. So maybe it won't take too, too long. Merge vertices, and then these edges are all their own, which is good. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and just cut this in half. Interesting, it doesn't cut the back. I think since we only cleaned up one side, there's an error remaining that's preventing that. But either way, we can just use the cut tool to get through that. Delete the side that's being a problem. Make sure our pivot's in the middle and just mirror that along X. Merge up all those verts and get rid of the middle. This stuff is all proper, which is nice. Okay, cool. So it is hollow though. So I'm going to also Boolean a cylinder through this. Let's 
duplicate this bonus one we have and isolate these two. Should be the same segment, so it's easy to work with. And I'm just going to rotate it into position here. And just pull this all the way through. So yeah, all these edges should line up pretty spot on. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I get the thickness right. It might actually be thinner than I thought. Um, let's go ahead and do a Boolean difference. Interesting, does not like that very much. I'm wondering if I just poke it through one end, how it will uh, react to that. Interesting, okay, it unified them, which <laughs> is not correct at all. When in doubt, one thing I like to try and do is just a default Boolean. So if I actually go to uh, mesh, Booleans, difference. Okay, that one is just going to delete everything. Interesting. Okay, so maybe we won't be doing a Boolean like that right now. It does not <laughs> seem to be working correctly. Maybe we should just try cleaning this up a little bit and it might like it a little bit more. So I'm going to close off some of these edges. Do it on both sides. And this should hopefully help it. Um, Cause now it has sort of less geometry errors to sort of complain about. If we freeze transforms, lead history on all this. Try a new difference. Still does not like it. Maybe merge vertices. Um, and if not, I'm going to try and see maybe having all these edges line up perfectly is a bit of an issue. So I'm going to rotate it slightly. Not entirely sure what the problem is. So we'll come back to this one later. I'll end up deleting that for now. Um, and we can just sort of move on. So we're going to want these cylinders poking up through the ends of these guys. As we can see, these go up and then another cylinder travels through it. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to have to use a um, Boolean operation for this one. So hopefully this one works a little bit better. I'm going to grab these edges and pull them out a little bit to give them some breathing room. And let's go ahead and grab our cylinder. I'm going to shrink this down. And they're pretty thin. Um, and they're mostly sticking to the front actually kind of seems like they're flush. So in order to get that look, I'm going to move my pivot to the very tip, snap this to the front and drag it down to be level. And then I'm going to just tuck it in a little bit so that the Boolean has a better chance of, of making it. Um, but this one goes quite a bit higher up. And it is quite a bit thinner as well. So I'm going to shrink that down. Uh, 
Uh, let's turn off isolation and see how high exactly it is going. It seems to be getting pretty close to this top bar. So I'm going to raise it up about that high. But it also makes me want to kind of raise all of this up a little bit. Kind of like so. So let's try and do a boolean on this, and uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works out. If not, doing a manual cut around this would probably be a bit of an issue. Um, new boolean union. Okay, so that one's not a problem. Clean up, delete history and base objects. Just gonna have to do a bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to just sort of snap these over. I'm snapping the ones that are going horizontal um, since the adjustment is much more minor for these guys. Just make sure they're consistent on both sides. And then we can merge vertices. Gonna anchor it down again, and let's go ahead and cut this in half. Um, actually, no, before we do that, we can already do this piece here where it's sort of going into another cylinder. This will be an interesting one to make a low poly of, just because these shapes are, well, <laughs> as you can see, lots of edges intersecting with weird edges. Round hard surface stuff is always uh, a bit interesting, but we can go ahead and add this before we slice it over. Um, so we can grab another cylinder, isolate these guys. Snapping it right there. And let's just focus on getting the size right. So it seems to be a little bit larger, mostly off to one side. Okay, and we'll try this again. We'll do a union, new boolean. So the unions are working pretty good. And then just like before, we're gonna have to snap some of these guys. Be sure to merge the verts. Okay, we're gonna drastically lower the poly count when we do the, um, obviously the low poly, and it'll probably be a bit simpler geo. So that shouldn't be too complicated. Uh, I am gonna lower that a little bit. And then what I wanna do is this also seems to have a tube going through it and it's hollow. So this one we can actually just select these two sides, extrude in, and just bridge across. So selecting both edge loops and selecting bridge should get that done. And let's go ahead and just slice this guy in half. I'm just doing a cut. I can then squish these guys and snap holding X to the grid. Now with our pivot in the middle, we can mirror over X, merge all the vertices, and delete that guy. We still have to think of a way to cut a hole into this. Um, 
but I suppose we can always return to that. For now, let's get this pipe going through here. Um, similar technique to what we've done in the past. So I'm going to grab our smart mesh tools. We're gonna to make a smart duplicate of these faces. Going to invert the normal so that the light side is on the outside. And with these two edge loops, we can just hit fill hole there. Now to ensure that these are the same size, I'm just gonna snap them to both ends. And then with that down, we can center pivot and just scale out a little bit. It seems like it comes out They seem a bit different on each side. This side just seems to sort of plug up. This side, I'm not sure what's going on. I guess we'll have to return to that, I think, when we have this tube going through. So for now, I'll keep them the same. All right, add an edge loop to both sides. Same technique as before. I'm gonna snap it to a common place. And then with both of them selected, I'll be able to scale out from the center and we can extrude these guys and have them be kind of like this slightly oversized plug shape preventing it from falling out. Uh, I suppose we could also use these for advantage and extrude them in just for more of an interesting shape. So that's that. Um, I guess before we go too far into this stuff, we could get these bolts in place. So there's two bolts here, and then there's also two bolts here bolting it down. So let's start with these ones. Should be the easiest. To keep it consistent, I'm just going to straighten these guys out. And then we can um, shift right click poke face. This will give us a place to plop a cylinder onto. See how big these guys are. Yeah, they're relatively small ones. Let's try to center that as best as I can. Duplicate and snap that over. Now let's go ahead and remove these. They're not needed anymore. And do a Boolean. So we only want to do one, so we'll combine these guys first. get our bool manager open again. New boolean, clean up, delete history and face object, and there are our holes. We can now grab a screw from somewhere, snap that guy into position, rotate it 90 degrees. We'll have one lower and one a little bit higher and rotated differently. So that's those two guys. Let's get these screws that are going right here in. Um, very similar. Just going to add these edges, snap them to the same height. Um, instead though, I'm just going to use this tool to quickly get a cylinder on there. Maybe 16 sides. Make sure it's not going too, too deep. 
duplicate snap to the center of hmm. get that in the middle we can mesh combine and I'm interested to see if this boolean will work because it didn't work up here so I want to see if it's isolated to this region or if it's the entire mesh that's kind of wonky now um, let's get our pool manager new boolean difference okay so it is something up here that it's just not liking very much um, but we can delete history and base objects on that guy and yeah these are a lot larger maybe not quite that large though I'm going to scale these in very subtly and I know they're not going to be perfect this way but I think it's more than fine when we bake it down it'll be unnoticeable can rotate this guy Okay, so that's those two guys. Cool, cool. Um, let's see, what can we do next? Um, this seems to have some sort of dangling part from it. I don't know if that's what I want to tackle next this just seems like a basic extrude I think the most important thing for us before we go too far ahead is to punch a hole through this and find a way to do that um, create cylinder I seem to have lost mine I'm just gonna try and do a boolean again now that it's changed and if that doesn't work I'm going to kind of adjust some of this geometry So just like before, we're going to pull this all the way through. Freeze transforms, delete history on both of these guys. And yeah, it works this time. I think maybe pulling it out and giving it more space might have been the issue, or maybe once we started adding more geo, it reset something. Um, but regardless, we seem to have that cutting through now, which is uh, pretty important for us to be able to move on here. So that's good. Very, very good. Start adding in some of these shapes here. They seem pretty simple on their own. Kind of rounded with this sort of bolt extruded out. It does seem to be wrapping backwards into something though. bit difficult to tell <laughs> exactly what's going on back there but I'm gonna at least make these guys first and then it'll all sort of uh, make a bit more sense as we go along I suppose so first things first um, I'm gonna clean this up because it looks like it could get kind of dangerous Okay. And merge all that. Okay, cool. Let's get a cylinder through there. Um, 
feel like I should make this a bit smaller. It doesn't seem that big. Something very weird is going on here. Typical Boolean shenanigans. Okay, I'm gonna isolate this guy. So I'm seeing that this is the problem area here. And there's verts on top of verts here. And simply merging them isn't doing it. So I'm going to get a hold of these guys. And shift right click, merge to center. G to repeat last command. I'm just going to do a pass going all the way around. Okay, let's do this side now. I think that should do it. I should be able to, yep, select the whole thing. And hopefully scaling it, perfect. Isn't causing any issues, cool. So let's get that pipe going through and then we'll work on these finicky end pieces. Um, we already did this technique, so smart duplicating the center, scaling it out, inverting the faces, and then just fill hole. So this is to create this little part here. And ultimately this end piece, it seems to be going all the way through. And because of so, it seems, yeah, quite a bit thinner, doesn't it? So in return, I'm going to have to bring this in. Okay, let's go ahead and create this guy. I want to double double check what's going on here. So it is wrapping around the back in one way, but I just mostly want to get the basic shape done and then we can worry about what's going on back here later. Um, it really is pretty much a cylinder with this sort of bump extruded and a bolt coming out of it, isn't it? So that's <laughs> about as easy as it gets. Um, so let's duplicate this guy. I'll just do one and then mirror it over. We can extrude out of this. Delete each end, bridge over the middle. This way we sort of have a perfect, perfect bridge across. Bridge, interesting. Bridge one edge first. It's saying there isn't the same amount of edges. So what I want to do is Merge vertices, but then turn this up to maybe 0.5. Warning camper from polymerge on selection. Interesting. Oh, well, I think I see the issue anyways.
bridge. Okay, well, that'll do it too. <laughs> um, which means there is an issue with this guy. Guess not. Um, this piece seems to be quite a bit larger. So I'm going to extrude it out like so. Kind of looks like so. Might want to make it a little bit longer. And in return, that one a bit longer. Okay, all that's remaining is kind of this little bump for the screw to come out of. And that's a pretty easy one. Can add a cut in the middle, bevel that cut. Take these two guys and extrude them forward and flatten out. Seems to be kind of tapered on one end. So we can just squish these guys in. Maybe we shouldn't make this so far out. I'll probably want to bake this all down later. Curious to see how well a um, bevel will look here to round it out. Yeah, it seems to work. It's not really breaking anything. And like I said, I'm only doing this because I know I'm going to bake it down. This looks like it would be completely crazy to try and find a way to make a low poly of this that works. Okay, let's cut a hole into that to put a, um, a screw into. going to be using this tool to get through this quickly. This is definitely going to be a much, much longer part, I can definitely tell. So I'll definitely be using these shortcuts since I've already shown how to do this. So we'll have that to the side. Let's isolate these guys. Just want to make sure it's not poking through or anything, but freeze transforms. We have our Boolean. A Boolean operation. We can even scale that in a wee bit and delete history and base objects. Okay, let's now spawn a screw on there, making it red. Cool, and that is that part done. I do kind of want to make this bigger. So of course we're going to have to extend the size of all of these as well. Okay. And let's duplicate this over. Moving our pivot to the center with grid snapping, mirroring over X, and then just simply duplicating this guy over. And randomly rotating it. Okay. 
cool. So with that part done, all we really have to do is do this sort of extrusion piece and then kind of the bottom part is all um, pretty much complete. So let's work on this bottom part. Maybe a side angle would give us a better idea as to what this exactly is. <laughs> Maybe not. Just kind of seems like a dangly piece. I'm assuming it's plugging into something back there, but it doesn't even seem like it is. It might just be for like sliding. Would that make sense? Something for sliding it left and right? Because it doesn't seem like it's going back very far. Um, regardless, it is a pretty pretty easy one to make. Just gonna add a slice in the middle, squish it down and snap it to the middle of the grid so I know it's centered. Now bevel this guy to the width of how, how deep I want it to be. And I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. Just kind of extrude. Yeah, just kind of extrude that down. I might make it a little bit thinner. Adjusting the scale very subtly. This view kind of makes it look like it's all lower, so I might consider grabbing all of this, selecting my verts, and Kind of dragging this down. Okay. Maybe not that much, but about there. So, if we kind of take a look at everything we've done, we've made this basic frame. We've gone all the way up here and we've done this. What we have to do now is kind of fill in the back. And I think the first thing that we're going to do there is finish off, <clears throat> excuse me, finish off these sort of pillars we made at the start. So they seem to go up. It really is pretty hard to tell what's going on in there. Um, Like I can't really tell how high up it's going or why it's not symmetrical on both sides. This one seems to, to me, it looks like it's cutting off here, but it might be going up higher. I'm going to go off of the idea that it's cutting off here um, and sort of extrudes out a little bit. That hollows out and has mechanisms sort of plugging into both sides. Um, so let's sort of build it off of that philosophy. Uh, 
also want to scale that a little bit. It kind of seems like it's tapering here, and I like the look of that. We'll end up mirroring this later, so that's just sort of a temporary look. And then we can widen the base. That's a bit more obvious. Yeah, that's looking better. Um, let's see how we can handle this. We can take these and I'm just going to do half of the work here, cutting all this in half. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is adding a even cut around the top. Merging that off. And then kind of getting this little extrusion out this way. So just merging that. Okay, so it has an opening where this sort of piece goes through and then plugs into this master sort of connector in the back. This kind of seems to be what everything is um, associated with in one way or another. So I think once we sort of cut these holes in, it's probably going to be important to figure out exactly how that's working. I'm also not really a fan of how wide all of this is. So what I'm going to do is grab this, move it over and shrink it a little bit. Pull that in. And I know that's going to kind of affect some other stuff we had set up. For example, the screw and this. Um, but we could just we can just pull it over like that, and I think that looks better. It was definitely a little chunky before. Uh, anyways, back to this. Kind of need to punch a hole through it. So let's grab a cylinder. Pull this through. Now this boolean isn't going to be perfect. I can tell because this has an opening and as long as there's an opening there uh, it's going to kind of mess with how this is. Um, but it should be a relatively quick fix either way so I'm just going to stick with it and have this going through. Freeze transform fleet history on both of these guys. And we can do a new boolean difference. Clean up Delete history and base objects. And see if we can just bridge that across. Nice. So it kind of seems like 
there's a screw located right about here. And then this contraption goes through and attaches up to this piece. Um, in fact, all this looks like it's a little bit lower. So I'm going to pull that down. But yeah, it also seems like it's sticking out, some pieces coming out, attaching here. And that's how it kind of comes together. And the length of all these seem to be similar to the one at the bottom, maybe a little bit shorter. Okay. Once again, when you don't really know how everything's plugged in, a good reference is to always think about how it works in relation to the things around it. Um, that's kind of how I've been working on this entire thing. Another thing to note is that this looks pretty rounded, so I'm going to kind of go for rounding this out. Okay, that <laughs> doesn't like that very much. Let's merge the verts and see what happens if we delete these edges and try that again. Definitely smoother and we can sort of snap these properly. Okay. Looking good. Um, all right, we have to get that bolt sort of placed in there, very similar to what we did here. So let's get a cylinder. Good thing about all this is that it's all going to be baked down. So I really don't have to worry about having any crazy topology to worry about. Um, but regardless, we still have to get it in there. So as long as this isn't poking through, it's good. Freeze transform, sweet history. Once again, we have an opening, so it's going to cause weird issues, but we can just extrude and fill hole to get the same effect. And then fix up these areas where they're doubling up. Okay. Got that guy in there, all good. So let's get this contraption in there, hook it up to the top, um, and then we'll mirror it over. And then from there, we just kind of have to worry about how it's all connected in the back. And that'll be like it, that is everything. Um, one thing I do want to note is that I do feel like everything is a bit wider than I'd like it to be. So I'm going to select everything on this side. And just sort of pull it in a little bit. Um, in doing so, I'm noticing obviously that I'm ruining the symmetry of some pieces. So let's work on getting that back before we do anything else. Um, just sort of adding cuts, lining them up with the middle grid space, deleting everything.
and mirroring along X. So it's all definitely starting to look a lot better. Um, this guy, I believe we can mirror over now. And then we're gonna have some work to, to clean up at the bottom here. So just moving that pivot to the middle. Yeah. Can delete that. Guy can be shrunk down a bit, scaled. Um, Finally, snap this guy. Okay, cool. Scale is looking a lot better. Um, if anything, I now kind of want this and this to be a little bit taller. and maybe scrunch that in, but that's kind of it. Um, off the top of my head, we can, excuse me, we can duplicate this and move it over. Rotate randomly. Um, nice, okay, let's work on this sort of back and how this is all connected. Um, seems like there's a piece here with a bunch of holes that connects into the side here and then these guys connect into the back and then this piece as we mentioned before connects up top let's focus on this piece connecting it to the top and then as we extrude it in we'll get this back piece and we'll connect it all that way um, okay so this will probably be the longest part um, of this tutorial ending off that way and we haven't saved yet so I'm gonna go ahead and save really quickly okay and we can continue along so it seems like we could probably afford to stretch these open a little bit more that seems a kind of a, a wider piece going through there so I'm just going to open that up a little bit more Make sure that's good all the way around. Maybe not that much. Like so. I also, looking at this, I think that's too subtle. I want it to be a bit rounder, a bit sharper. So I'll just bring these guys up a little bit. And we can do the same technique we were doing before, grabbing these guys, smart duplicating, inverting, and filling hole. Um, 
this one doesn't seem like it's going all the way through. It seems to stop at this sort of machine piece in the middle. So we'll have it going roughly there. Actually, it seems like it has a gear sticking out on this end, so I don't even have to put it all the way through. I'll stop it about here. It seems to come out about this far before connecting up here and all this sort of additional machinery coming out of it. Um, right, so this piece seems to be this that's cat like going down and connecting to this. I'm gonna have to angle that back a little bit. If I can find an angled image to support that. Mm, it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like it might be angled back, and that's kind of a the only solution I can really think of in this case. So I'll end up having to do that. Before I forget though, I want to put a bolt here. I'm just going to put this guy on the very end. And seems like this comes out a bit more, so maybe I'll actually take these faces first and pull them out. Have to do that on both sides. And then place that there and we can just mirror it over. Like we've done before. Um, okay, let's stop beating around the bush and actually find a way to make this piece. So it kind of seems like if we duplicate this, we can make this end cap. Um, very similar to what we did before where we just sort of extrude this out. We delete both ends and then just simply bridge it all across. Slot that in over top. And we just need to worry about this piece connecting down here now. So I'm gonna pull this out a bit. And then maybe adding a thin cut here which we can then extrude this out like so. And this would wrap around. Okay, so that works. I'd want that to be a bit tighter in. And this kind of poking out a little bit though. And then there seems to be some kind of ring right about here. So I'm gonna just add some edge loops and some thickness and kind of put that into place like so. It kind of makes me want to grab all of this and just kind of pull it all in. It seems like it's getting kind of far, kind of far and out of hand there. So I'll pull it in like that. 
we're getting that kind of effect. Um, but we do need to put a bolt on here. So let's go ahead and do that. Just our typical Boolean. So just making sure it's not puncturing. We can go ahead and freeze transforms, delete. It's getting very repetitive now. It's been a very long part. I'm just like, we're so close to ZBrush. We're totally getting there soon. Uh, new Boolean. I know this is new. Um, nope. New Boolean, clean up, delete history and base objects. So it feels kind of weird saying it all out loud. I feel like I'm kind of talking like a zombie at this point. Um, So I'm just like, let's just get through this. I'm gonna change the rotation to object space here. Just did it off screen. Rotate and give it a red color. And that'll wrap up that piece. Seems like this extrudes up more. And I kind of love the idea of it being even more complicated than it has to be. So I'm just gonna add these edges and kind of flatten them out. Close that off and then Drew this up again. Seems like it's out and then points in. So I guess I could connect these sides. That's looking more like that shape. But there's definitely another screw going through that. So we're gonna have to do another Boolean. Um, <laughs> I suppose you don't really want me to explain again how to do Billions. I'd love to see how many times I've explained uh, how to do a boolean in this tutorial series so far. This is weird geo, but it's harmless, so we'll clean it up later. Um, Okay. Um, cool, which means now we just have to solve this middle piece and how exactly all of that is connected. I do want to see something here. It just seems like there's not a lot of space between the two, so I'm gonna pull this 
forward a little bit, as well as this screw. Um, Okay, let's go ahead and mirror that and then we'll work on the back. And as long as everything connects properly, that, that does it for this part actually. No, we did not snap that over. Um, so, so close, so, so close. This one I'm going to Screwed out like this. Do something along those lines. Um, let's see. Right, we are mirroring this piece over. Adding a cut to the middle. Freeze transforms, lead history, mirror X. Mirror inverts. Cool. We can sort of adjust this stuff. And then we never actually mirrored over this stuff properly. So with this one, you can just put the pivot in the middle and mirror X. Same here. We then have to duplicate the screw over. And then as for this top part, delete half and mirror X. Nice. Okay. That's looking pretty cool. Um, so that's basically it. It's just this background stuff, which looks way more complicated than it probably is. It kind of just seems like a piece of metal that's somehow plugged into these guys, um, cut in half with a bunch of screws going through it. Um, so I'm just going <laughs> to see what the best reference looking at it straight on is. probably this one, and then try and recreate it from a cube. So, I'm going to snap this to the middle. Just to start off, I know this is supposed to be um, a round part. Um, let's see, we can get that in the middle by grid snapping. But let's go ahead and snap one end here, snap one end here. You can then make it quite a bit thinner and then add a cut in the middle. I'm just like blocking it out loosely, can boolean it to get the main shape of it, it kind of seems like it comes down a bit 
but is very lopsided. It extrudes down again. Maybe not that lopsided. Then sort of squeezes into a finite point near the bottom. It's just lower than this sort of nick here. Okay, what else are we missing? Kind of, you know, more than anything seems lopsided, doesn't it? Whoa, okay. Seems like I could pull this all over like this and it would work pretty well. Pull this down. It goes up a little bit. And then obviously this is cutting through, so we have to pull it back a little bit. So I'm assuming that these parts sort of go forward a bit, but it's also kind of cut in half in a weird way. It has like a panel line through the whole thing. And then there's various bolts throughout it. Let's see if I can find a different reference for it. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. It's a lot thinner in this one too. And the top is also a lot thinner. It seems kind of like it's a relatively small piece minus these connections. And it's off to the side. Um, there's this rounded bit. Kind of above it all. So I'm going to pull this in. And this is where we really start to lose visual information. So I'm going to extrude this out a little bit. And this is going to be that rounded bit. Make sure these tips are merged properly. It also seems to extrude up. And like over. But at this point, like this is just a lot of me guessing and I don't really like the sort of lack of understanding as to what's going on here. Um, I also notice how dark it is here, so what I think I'm going to do, just because, like I said, I don't really know everything that I'm doing here. I'm going to grab all of this. Go 
going to go into vertex mode. Wait, I need to grab these bolts as well. Go into vertex mode, grab all of this and pull it back. Um, I'm running out of clear explanations as to what a lot of this stuff does. So I think what I'm going to do is start to, um, connect these and then with it connected, start to add the booleans and the cuts. And then that'll probably, probably do it. Um, just because. I'm not here to just sort of make up what I think this is, and there's really no reference of this specific part in great detail. It seems to sort of come forward a little bit, which is interesting. Okay, and then we'll have these guys sort of connect in the back, which will fill in some of this space as well, which is nice. But mostly right now, I'm concerned with connecting these pieces. So, I think one way to do it would be to just Add a loop here and snap it as far as I can over. Merge verts. Extrude this out. And bevel it to be rounded. We can then puncture a hole through there. And I'll do the same here, keeping it relatively the same size. Extrude it out the same length. Okay, we'll merge all that. We'll merge these to center in case they're just resting on top of each other. Um, yeah, let's puncture that through. Um, Yeah, and then we'll probably mess with the size of everything afterwards to sort of fill it in a bit, I guess. It also seems like this is a little bit different. Seems like in a lot of the reference, it's a lot taller, so. Um, anyways, let's continue back with this.
Yeah, it seems like this is all lower. I think that's what it might be. Let's let's grab all this because I want to get the feel right before I'm really adding more booleans because as you can see it just makes it more complicated to uh, work with. I'm going to grab these verts. Pull them down. Okay, let's get this Boolean going on. <clears throat> uh, freeze transform, delete history. Punch a cylinder through this guy. The good old boolean. Clean up, delete history and base. Yep. Might want to just shrink this a little bit. Don't want the, the edges to be um, too thin, that's why. And just sort of fill this in. Okay. And let's see exactly where we have to in this guy. It looks like this is one that's going into the back. I kind of like that. It kind of makes it look like that bolt that we place in the front has a purpose. So I think I might play with that a little bit more where I just mm, doesn't quite make it there. So let me cut that. Snap this forward, or snap it up rather. Snap this forward. Just add some layers, I kind of like that. I'm also going to be shrinking this down. So we have a bunch of screws throughout this thing, a bunch of places we're going to be cutting holes. And let's Go ahead and set those up right now. Um, so we're just going to grab this cylinder. Nothing seems to be kind of straight. So I guess I'll be 
eyeballing a lot of this stuff. Like this is off to the side a little bit. It seems like there's a screw here at the bottom. Hmm, and it makes me kind of want to raise this up because it looks like the screw is close to that bar and the bottom of this is just under that. So it's kind of right here. There's one right above, but it kind of seems like something's kind of extruded out. Kind of seems like this comes out and has like this kind of shape to it. Almost. Anyways, this is pretty much right above it, a bit smaller. There's one here. And there's one up here. We also have a hole in the middle. seems to punch all the way through and then yeah another one here um, and I think that should do it let's go ahead and combine all these guys Try to go for a boolean and <laughs> hope it all goes through evenly. Let's go ahead and save first because this is probably a bit of a risky boolean since there's so much going on. Okay, this part's a little close to the edge so I might pull it out a bit. Same with this one. But other than that, we can go ahead and freeze transforms, delete history, and Looking like a pretty clean Boolean. Let's go ahead and fill these guys up, actually. Um, not all of these are the same. In fact, most of them are all different. We're seeing a lot of these flathead screws here, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and make these red, of course, so we can find them easier. These guys like to poke out a little bit. This one just seems to be kind of round. This one up here is the same. Wireframe mode is kind of useless at this stage because there's just so much shit going on. Okay, so this is just kind of like a rounded dome. This one comes out a little bit and has a screw sticking out. Um, let's go for the one on the left first. Sounds a bit easier to work with. Can just snap this right in the middle.
to me it kind of just looks like someone did a kind of tight bevel. Like that. Um, then there's this one here. Similar. Only difference is that the um, faces on the back kind of extended a little bit more. So this comes out and kind of tapers. It has a screw coming out. I don't think I'm going to add that just because it's one of those things where we'd have to actually model that with Geo, you know, just get kind of unnecessary pretty quickly. Um, and finally, it seems like there's a divot in here, so I'm going to model that in. Um, I'm going to clean this up too. It's pretty close. Um, yeah, there's like some tight edges and panel lines. I'm going to try my best to uh, mimic those. Maybe not, maybe not. At the very least I wanna clean it up so it's a bit wider. This though, I kinda do wanna close off. So I'm going to add some edges in here. Let's snap this down, snap this to there, snap this down, snap this to there. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can have kind of, kind of a flat gap here and I can pull it in. So it's kind of this, well, there's this, layering effect um, there's also a bit of a gap but then there's the secondary gap that I kind of want to get in really quickly so we'll have that angle pretty much be the same this cut here uh, we can do that by adding a cut to the top, beveling it very thin. Just very roughly tracing out the shape of our cut. Um, and then just, yeah, grabbing the edges, scaling them so they're even. and then actually deleting the geo and bridging it across. And this is something we can bake down, so that's kind of nice. Starting to notice this angle's a bit more extreme. Just gonna pull this all in a bit. And then the only thing we have left to do is kind of wrap these guys around the back. 
That shouldn't be overly complicated. So if I extrude this back and then just add a cut, I kind of have something to extrude it back into it with. Um, what I am going to do though is isolate this and clean it up quite a bit. Um, so it's easier to work with. Yeah, all these edges are just going to make it kind of a pain in the ass to work with, so I might as well get rid of them. And then just merge that. Um, I'm also going to scale this in quite a bit and pull it in. Because we can't really see totally what's going on in the reference, but it seems to be starting from the inside more than anything. And then from here, kind of want to angle this a little bit. But we can just extrude this in, have it snap in the middle of the grid. And then when we duplicate it over, it should connect. I'm going to delete this side. Uh, I'm also going to round this out a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, if we mirror that along X, we can merge verts, delete that. It's all kind of connected. And then all we really have to do to sell its functionality would be um, add a cut in the middle. Bevel it. And then just sort of have it attach in one way or another to this machine. Um, we'll never be able to see that, so I'm going to leave it just like that so you can tell that it's wrapped around. Um, but that does that piece. I think that does it. We might revisit it. Uh, when we're doing the high poly and maybe do some subtle design changes, but um, like up here might be something that we did and could change. Like if I select these pieces, I might want to Pull the verts in on one side. And maybe like get rid of these edges so that I could then go back into the verts and pull it in even closer. Because this side seems to be different than this side. Um, I might want to make this thinner. It seems much thinner here. But we could nitpick over this uh, forever. The only thing that I don't really understand about this is how it all connects, like what the purpose of this is. Um, I might want to 
add an edge loop here. Cut across and then extrude this down so it's thicker. Yeah, but I think that does it. I, I'm getting the hunch that like this looks like it's a bit taller and it looks like it might plug into some stuff up here. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't really know what any of that stuff is. So I don't want to be messing with it too much. I might just make it all a little bit taller and mess with the proportions before I totally end this off. Just gotta grab everything. Um, just for now and for convenience sake, what I'm going to do is put this stuff on its own layer just so we can select it all at once really quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just sort of play with the height and the width of it a little bit. I still have to fix that. Didn't notice that. But yeah, sort of comparing where these guys line up. The top part seems to be in the middle. This part seems to be lining up at the bottom, which is what we have. The width, the amount of space seems to match what we have. It just kind of seems like this goes up and maybe attaches onto something. But I think for now we're gonna call it. Um, we're gonna say that this is done and we're gonna move on to the high poly. Um, finally, <laughs> finally moving on to the high poly. This guy we might have to revisit when we're doing the, uh, like when we do the high poly pass on it, I might leave it for the end. Um, but I'll do some more research into it and see, you know, what is it plugging into? Is there something going on? It kind of seems like something here is happening. Um, something's going on. But we'll leave that for later. We'll leave that for, um, let me pull that back. We'll leave that for when we get to it in the high poly, because right now I think this is at a very, very solid state. Even if we didn't connect it to anything, I think it would look like it's doing its job. Um, and with that, that is the low poly done. We have completed everything we need to. This is totally functioning. Um, We've got all the guts, that entire intimidating, crazy typewriter reference images that we were looking at a long time ago. We finally have a working version of that. All the pieces are connected to one another. Everything sort of has its own purpose and reason uh, for being there. And honestly, I, I'm super happy with it. Looking at this guy, I was super scared of like, ah, oh, shit, how do we even begin to understand what's going on inside of here? Um, and as you guys saw, and as you guys can go back and watch in previous chapters, like we, we figured it out just by sort of breaking things down into isolated sections and figuring out how they work in relation to things that we already know exist in the model. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'm super excited to say that the next time you watch one of these videos, if you're following along, will be the high poly. We have finally finished the first major section. And I can confidently say that this will probably end up being the, the longest section uh, by a pretty large margin. So thank you for watching this. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I will see you in the high poly section of the tutorial. All right. Take care, guys.